Hey guys, um, we've got a case study coming up next with Raycom Sports. Those of you that are interested in archiving, uh, I'm Doug Price, the National Sales Director for Avid and Sports. Uh, many of you guys I know. Uh, those of you looking for shared storage for your Adobe, we do have that. Uh, it's at the booth. We also have replay as well as graphics. We do more than what most people think that we do. Um, but the topic is archiving. How do you archive multiple years of um, history? And to do that, uh, obviously Raycom is leaning on Avid to, uh, to be a partner in that. And I'd like to introduce Alex Farmentino from Raycom Sports. Hi, everybody. Um, if you want to roll that short intro video, you can go ahead and do that now. This tornado affected a lot of people. Do you believe it? Yes! Yeah! Let's go be legendary, boys. We know what our purpose is, and we come. TBT 3 p either now or never. So there you go. There's our little 30-second uh, little promo deal. Um, I'm Alex Farmartino. I'm the coordinating producer at Raycom Sports. Uh, glad to talk with all of you guys today. Um, you can go ahead and go to the first slide. They don't need to look at my face anymore. Just to give you kind of a, a snippet of what Raycom Sports is, I see logos from all over the country. Some of you may know, may not know. I'm primarily here today to talk about um, kind of what we do uh, as far as our ACC content. And, you know, short history lesson, ACC basketball started being broadcast in 1957, actually. A guy named C.D. Chesley um, was the, the first guy that was like, hey, people may want to watch ACC basketball on television. And that started something where C.D. Chesley and his production company handled that up until about 1980. When those rights shifted in the early 80s, Raycom Sports was one of two companies um, that Raycom Sports, along with Jefferson Pilot Sports, kind of took over and, and really started, before, as cable was kind of just getting started, was syndicating these ACC football and basketball games uh, over the course of, and we, basically we've been doing it ever since. Obviously ESPN has is taken on a larger and larger role of that, but that's something that we have always been a part of. Um, and we're not a huge operation. We have a production staff of about, about 10 people, but we have a mountain of freelancers, and we go out and we do about, as it stands right now, where things have evolved, we do about 130 football and basketball ACC broadcasts that are distributed through a variety of means. This here threw a bunch of logos at you, and I don't know what happened with the boxes there, but you can go back, go back a slide real quick. Um, this is kind of a, little, a sampling of everything we've done. On the top line, our ACC content that we distribute is split in two ways. Um, number one, the ACC network uh, is a syndicated package. It goes to about 120 affiliates across the country. Uh, we have our ACC Blitz Studio show that goes along with it. It's distributed digitally through the ACC DN. I know it's a ton of ACC logos. There's a lot of ACC brand confusion. It's my job to know it. It confuses me sometimes. So, but that's basically half of what we do. The other half, we partnered with Fox Sports South, the guys out of here, to distribute. We had half our content going to an over-the-air distribution. We wanted it to be on cable as well. So we partnered with them and said, hey, if you put our games on the Southeast Fox Sports South footprint, then you can involve a Nesson and a Yes and Root and all these other places. So both of our packages of these 130 games are distributed nationally. Uh, we also do, um, you know, feature type content. Forging History was a show that we did uh, along with the ACC. We partnered with the office in Greensboro. That was delivered on ESPN. The TBT is a winner take all $2 million basketball uh, tournament that is going to actually be airing on ESPN in, in about a month or so. Haviland Football Saturdays, hosted by Tim Brando from Fox Sports, is something we did for 14 years. It's a feature-based show. We're the preseason partner, production partner of the Carolina Panthers. We're also getting into eSports with Blizzard, a show called Heroes of the Dorm we just did. All of that to say, we have a whole lot of content, and we have a whole lot of video and footage as a result. 
My role there is somewhat unique in that I'm in the truck producing games, I'm in the field shooting and then later editing features. Uh, I also have to keep our workflow working and that's, that's the prime reason I'm here. Well, when you have all that history and you go back to the early 80s and you have all that content, you can go and change the slide, you end up with this. It is our pile. I'm sure many of you have a pile similar to it. If you don't, congratulations, you're more on the ball than we were. And for a long time, with me being very hands-on in all elements of the production, pulling footage, needing to get this stuff out, I was saying, guys, th there's these great things called computers and files, and we need to get rid of tapes, and we need to have files. And our guys were like, well, what's that going to cost? So I went and I found out. And just to digitize, to give you an idea, our kind of primary library was about 25,000 tapes. Three-quarter, beta, digibeta, HD cam, XD cam, DVC Pro. There's a ton of stuff. And that was how the world worked. And we also were piling up drives. And we had nowhere to land. And so for about five years, I went, guys, what about the pile? Guys, what about the pile? And they're like, okay, fine. How much, if somebody else digitizes it, what's it going to take? And I collected numbers, and some people said, oh, we'll do it for a million bucks. And I kind of paused, and I went, okay. And then the next person said, oh, we'll do it for 800 grand. And you just kind of go, man, like, that's never going to happen. Like, we're not that big operation where we can just throw. When with archive, and the hard thing I think anyone who's thought about archive is, the penny pinchers, the accountants that drive me crazy but also run the world, are the ones that want to see a clear return on investment. What is the archive getting for us? Well, finally, after about five years of campaigning, the, the capital fairy came and sprinkled some fairy dust on our building, and they said, that, we want it done in a year. I went, a year? And they said, what's it going to take? Well, there's a lot of different options with all this stuff. And I'm going to flip to give you a sense. This, this is kind of where we're, we've, we've landed. And, um, and, and that's, there's, you know, there's a lot of pieces to that. And I'll, I'll get into specifics if you have any other questions. Basically, where I landed was I didn't want to outsource this thing. You get another company to do something, it's basically like on the, the casual end of dating relationship. It can end up being like a marriage. You just better really know those people. And if it goes poorly, it can get really ugly. And I know everyone's run into the cloud and everyone wants to tell you that everything's the cloud, but you know, everyone you talk to that's actually doing that, it's, it's expensive for the amount of footage I'm talking about. 25,000 tapes, and I'm a production guy. I don't want everything at 12 megabit H.264. Like, I want to actually preserve stuff that when we get into a 4K universe, however many years from now, it's still going to look good. Because at heart, I'm a production guy, and I just want things to look Right. I want them to be preserved at a high level. And I've seen corners cut before where you digitize a bunch of stuff at DV25 and then you go into the, you know, five years later and it looks like crap. And everyone's going, man, what happened to that game? What happened to this? So basically where we landed is we decided we were going to do it. Me and, you know, a few other people were going to, were going to attack this project. And the, and part of the reason Doug from Avid introduced me, I, I broke in as an editor at Raycom. Uh, and Avid's what we've had. We started with two Avid Express stations with 40 gig raids, and that was where I spent three or four years of my life when I tried to pretend that I actually knew a little bit about television. So what we have now is, and what we've slowly built up to is, and the reason we've gone with Avid and why it's helped us is, when I buy a car, I don't want to assemble the engine. Now, I might be able to go get a carburetor and a radiator. I might be able to save money and get, and it'll still run. People do that with computers now. Hackintosh has whole pages in B&H. For me, as somebody who still had to do a lot of stuff, I just wanted somebody who could sell me an engine, sell me a workflow. And Avid could give me more of that workflow than anybody else. You can see we have 10 Media Composer clients in the top left-hand corner. What we've been working on in years past is the airspeed multi-streams, which is how we get footage in. All of that stuff checks into the in interplay indexing. And oh, by the way, Avid sold us storage too. The great thing is the way this stuff's conceptualized is it's conceptualized to work together. This is not five companies coming together. It's one company. My experience has been that it's worked pretty well. And as we've dove into this archive initiative with basically all we had to do was say, hey, guys, I need to ramp up the throughput on all this stuff. And I needed more storage. I went from a storage that they don't like to talk about the name anymore to Nexus. And then we upgrade from airspeed to fast serve. So now we have a box that will give us eight channels of HD. I've got 15 channels of HD running back into our system at the office right now. As it stands right now, 
you know, we've got 10 or 11,000 of the 25,000 tapes digitized. And they're in Interplay, and we have a watch folder workflow. The landing spot is Sony Optical Disk Archive. I know there's a lot of people out there doing LTO. LTO is fine. I, OD, ODA to me was more robust. It was faster. I know it's got a little lower capacity, but tape is just so delicate and the generational stuff. If you have questions about that, we can have a conversation offline. Um, and I know my time's running out here a little bit. But so, you know, basically, we've had, through kind of ha at the halfway point, we've had a pretty good experience with this. All the footage, all the assets, all the history that we're trying to preserve, that there is kind of how we attacked it. And as somebody who doesn't, I don't spend my life in a server room, I don't aspire to. All of you that do, that are engineers full time, God bless you. Ken Cleary, who was standing up here saying, hey, I called my IT guy and they had 100 terabytes for me that I don't have to worry about. I wish I lived in that world. I don't. The good thing is, and the final thing I'll say is with Avid, if it doesn't work, and it, there's, this is seldom the case, there's one number to call. I go, guys, there's Avid on just about every box in here. Somebody make it work. And the biggest inefficiency I've seen is when you have three companies collaborating on a workflow, trying to get one of them to take ownership when something's not working properly, that's the time suck for me. That's where days of my life have disappeared, where you email one person, they say, oh, you got to go here. And it's a giant he said, she said. And that was the thing that I've been able to eliminate as we've grown it and have Avid delivers good products. They've continued to, and as we've expanded and we dive in to do this, it has helped us with this archive project. So that's about the time I have. I don't know if there's time for questions, but if you have any, fire away. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the rest of the show.